Now, our tangled story of romance starts with a lonely predator. Oh, no it doesn't. There, now well. A spotted owl. Now, this is actually a barred owl. Wait, is it? Yeah, this is a barred owl. They're hard to tell apart. Looks very similar. You're right, it doesn't have spots. Good, yeah. So, our tangled story of romance starts with a barred owl, a fearsome nocturnal predator. Sadly, he's in love. Unrequited love, in fact. Now, let me tell you a couple things about the owl before I have you read this, and you can preview that. Um, now, owls are pretty astonishing animals. A couple things about them. One, those huge eyes are not round, they're tubes. They go back into their head like a cylinder, which helps them see very well in the dark. They can gather a lot of light, but it means that they can't move their eyes side to side at all, which is why owls have those cool necks that rotate more than any yoga instructors ever will. <laughs> About 270, 300 degrees. Owls also have an incredible sense of hearing. Everybody pretty much knows that they're very quiet as they fly, but their hearing is also exceptionally keen. They can hear a mouse crawling on the forest floor from 30 feet above. Go ahead and read. Sadly, our forest uh, predator is feeling pretty lovesick. Look here. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm in love. Who could resist her? Her big, bright eyes and soft, silky hair. And did you see her shiny whiskers? Those enormous flaps of extra skin. I just have to ask her to dinner. So, our owl is a bit of a ham. Shiny hair, beady bright eyes, enormous flaps of extra skin. Who do you think that the owl might be smitten with? Do you have a guess who our next player is going to be? Yes. Um, a tiny squirrel. Bonsai. <laughs> Unbelievable. Now, the northern flying squirrel is indeed the object of the owl's affection, not romantically, but because the owl likes nothing more than a tasty northern flying squirrel for dinner. <laughs> Unfortunately for the owl, his affections are not returned. In fact, our northern flying squirrel is completely obsessed with another player in our romance. Um, first of all, before you read that, can I get you to hold your hands up like this for a second? <laughs> <laughs> One cool thing about flying squirrels that I almost always forget to mention, feel lucky, they crawl up to these high trees, they glide up to 300 feet across the forest, and then they have a little trick that prevents them from going <laughs> into the side of a tree trunk. They have really cartilaginous wrist bones, so their wrists can flex almost a full circle. As they're flying in towards the trunk of a tree, they <laughs> flare them out, their whole body goes up like this, and then if you're a pilot, what do they do? Stall. They stall. So they almost stop, then they glide to a stop, and then they crawl around to the far side of the tree very quickly because... Northern Spotted Owl might be right on their tail. Who is it that you're interested in, my friend? Um, it's just, oh, how I love you. Let me count the way. I love your wet, earthy smell and protein-packed body. <laughs> I love the taste of your high face, but frankly, I think your underground bachelor pad needs work. <laughs> protein-packed body. Wet, earthy smell. Underground bachelor pad, is that correct? Right? Yeah, right. underground bachelor pad. Thank, first of all, give her a hand. Thank you very much. And before we guess, I have a confession to make. You're so relieved. She's like, oh, that's okay. <laughs> Anybody got a guess? Hyphae, underground. Wet earthy smell. Yes. No, but so close, so close. It's not an animal. Yeah. Oh, what kind of mushroom? It's a specific family. If you've got really expensive tastes, you might enjoy them. I'm hearing it, but nobody wants to, like, raise their hand and tell me. Yeah! Boom! They look like rocks, don't they? Sometimes I have to show the picture and people are still like, what? <laughs> so, truffles are mushrooms that actually grow underneath the ground. Now, your standard mushroom grows up in a cap, like a, like a big toadstool-looking thing, and its spores are spread by the air. But a mushroom never comes up, um, uh, rather, a truffle never comes up above the ground. The way that they spread themselves around is that they put out a really strong scent. 
I talked to a ranger out in the hoe who found a truffle when he was digging out a tree stump. He threw it in the back to take it to the visitor center to use it as an example for a program. He only got about five miles down the road before he stopped the car, put the brake on, got out, and threw the truffle into the woods. Because <laughs> it stank so bad that he couldn't make the rest of the journey. So, truffles exude a strong smell. Northern flying squirrels smell that, fly down, dig up the truffle, eat it, take off, zoom across the uh, forest, very carefully not into the trees, and then what do they do, eventually, once they've digested? They poop. No service is so important to the forest as pooping. They spread the spores of truffles, which otherwise cannot reproduce. Pretty fantastic trick. Now, our truffle, unfortunately for the northern flying squirrel, is indeed smitten with yet another player in our tangled web. Please take it away, sir. When will she ever notice me? I live at her feet, get nutritious food from her every day, and not one word. She just wouldn't survive without me to kick around. That sounds intense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sir, give him a hand. <laughs> the truffle lives at her feet, brings in delicious food every day. Any guesses? Sir? Tree. 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 Okay. Now, if I was to dig into the base of any of these trees around here and look at the root, we would find that they're covered in fungus. This is pretty spectacular. In fact, early foresters, when they dug up these tree roots and saw these fungus, scraped them off, reburied the tree, thinking this would improve the health of the tree. Did it? No. no. In fact, those tiny fungus do what's called a mycorrhizal or mycorrhizal relationship, depending on how you prefer the pronunciation. They grow their little roots into the trunk of the tree, and that way they actually enable the tree to get more water and more nutrients, grow bigger, stronger, and provide a place for more fungus to grow. So the two, the fungus and the tree, are completely dependent now upon one another. The forest around us would not survive without these tiny fungus growing on the roots, and of course the fungus would have nowhere to grow if there were no trees. So let's review, shall we? We have our fearsome predator, lonely and sad, pining away for a mighty forest prey item, the northern flying squirrel, who goes and feasts upon the truffles, which are the only thing that enable the huge trees that we find in the Olympics to grow, and to add another level to this complex puzzle of love, our northern spotted owl needs large trees, like the ones found in old growth forests, to roost and build its nest. So it is also dependent upon the trees. So go the nights of our lives. In the <laughs> But now we need to be a little more serious, right? We're getting into really late night now. Now, you can blame MTV or you can blame uh, novelists if you want. There's a tradition of telling scary stories at nighttime that goes back thousands of years. I don't know who thought it up. I really want my kids to love camping. I'm going to take them out, tell them the most terrifying story I can, feed them a flaming marshmallow, and put them to sleep in an unfamiliar environment. Surely, they will remember this experience fondly. Well, of course, I would say that I'm not going to tell any scary stories, but I am going to tell some scary stories. I've got three of them. Every one of them is absolutely true. So listen carefully, and I'll take it away if I can find them. Late one evening, I was driving on a lonely forest road. Suddenly, there was a loud pop, and the car began to shake. Flat tire. As I was changing the tire in the inky darkness, I heard a twig snap behind me. And when I shone my flashlight into the woods, I saw the evil glimmer of a thousand eyes staring back at me. Anybody ever shown their light? out in the forest and seen eye shine or reflected eyes come back at them? How'd that make you feel? A little bit unnerved, perhaps? This particular story, the flat tire and all, happened to a close friend of mine, Ranger Jeff. Ranger Jeff shone his light into the woods, saw thousands of eyes peering back at him. He did what any self-respecting ranger would do. He ran. <laughs> he ran for his life. He ran down the road for a couple miles, actually, until he got to the main campground where he'd been headed before the flat tire. He came back shouting, Oh my God, there's thousands of animals out there in the woods! <laughs> well, they go up the next morning, and what should they find but evidence of a very particular type of animal 
that had been bedded down for the evening. Can anybody tell what this is a picture of? Elk? Sure. Or deer? Cartoons? It is, in fact, elk. Yeah. Aww. So he was frightened into fleeing by elk. <laughs> elk, like a lot of other animals that come out at night, have a really cool adaptation inside their eyes called a tapita lucida. Any Harry Potter fans in the crowd? <laughs> tapita lucida! <laughs> they, knew anything. Number one. they have a tapita lucida inside their eyes. On the back of their eyeball, there's a, a carpet of reflective cells. They work like a mirror. And any light shining into the eyeball gets reflected out past the optic nerve, and it kind of doubles the amount of light that's accessible to the eye. So animals with a tapita lucida, like these elk, see better in the dark. But that mirror distorts their vision a little bit, so their vision is usually not as good as human vision, at least at night. And it also, um, well, what was I going to say? It sort of is, oh, it also um, limits the functioning of their cones. So oftentimes, animals that can see really well at night can't see color. Can't see color. For your own personal information, when you're using the bathroom and you shine your light out and you see some eyes reflecting back at you, deer, elk, horses, and a few other hooved animals usually have a white or blue eye shine. Your bears, believe it or not, not making this up, have red eye shine. <laughs> Shines back red. And animals like a cougar have a yellow or a greenish eye shine reflecting back at you. However, it's hard to tell whether you're looking at a cougar or a raccoon. It can be tricky in the nighttime. 